stories that are untold, underreported, and all out inspirational. Carrie Pena reports. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Carrie Pena Reports on iTunes and Stitcher and for watching us on inspiredmedia360.com. Be sure to subscribe so you can see all of our interviews and shows. We like to focus on the untold, underreported, and the all-out inspirational. Joining us today, talking about inspiration, Tara Hitchcock, good friend of mine, a television personality, and uh, you have an incredible story, personal story to share with us today. T, thanks for being here. What is up with you and your podcast? You've got a, a business, an office space. She's all grown up. A logo what? on the wall. <laughs> some sort of backdrop that makes it look like we're boozing the, at night. This right? Is great. Do you need a booze? Uh, probably, yeah, After in about the show. five, ten minutes. You know, we we're going to talk about your family's story. And it's such a beautiful story uh, to share with all the listeners and the viewers. But first, I really want to talk to you a little bit about your personal journey. For those in the Phoenix area and in, around Arizona, they probably recognize you. You were a main anchor in Phoenix, and you had a fast rise in the television industry at a very young age. What was that like? I was honestly blessed by good timing. I was in the right place at the right time, and I've, and it's kind of been the motto in life for me, not just professionally, but yeah, I was in Beaumont, Texas. I was out of uh, college, Northwestern. I got my master's at Northwestern in broadcast journalism and got a job in Beaumont as a reporter and a producer, and a month later, they needed a main anchor, asked me if I wanted to do it. I, I doubled my huge $12,500 <laughs> salary um, and was thrilled to do it, and then I stayed there for about a year and a half or so and thought, you know what, I'm ready to make my next move to maybe Austin or San Antonio, and fast forward, I took a week off to try and find an agent. And uh, I got back from that week and had a job in Arizona, hosting Good Morning Arizona and replacing a, a woman who had gone to the Today Show, the network, and I was about 25 years old. And I was just blessed by good timing. And, and you know our bosses, Phil and Dennis at yeah. the time. I was blessed even more so with two guys who said, you know what, she's not great, she doesn't look great, but she's got something there that we can mold and work with. So we're gonna give her a chance and we're gonna surround her with everything she needs to get better and that's who we're going with. And and that's almost unheard of in this day and age of image consultants and yeah. viewers calling up saying they don't like this. To have these people that admit, you know what, she's young, she's raw, but we'll give her a shot. And well, I was lucky. Were you scared? You know what's funny? I was so amazed I had the job in Phoenix that I think it worked to my benefit. I thought if I'm <laughs> fired tomorrow, I, I was and in good. Phoenix. <laughs> yeah. So in a weird way, it actually helped because believe me, we had viewers for a long period of time calling and writing saying, who did you just hire to replace this person who's going to a network? And I just didn't care. I, I Honestly, I couldn't believe I was there. So I think that helped. <laughs> so I wasn't nervous. You know, um, for our listeners and viewers, I was actually an intern on Tara's morning show. <laughs> and uh, I, I loved it because I always thought that you you were very raw and real. I mean, yeah. you, you were a person who didn't always, I hope you don't mind me saying this, but you're not always, everything isn't always perfect. No. <laughs> World. I've got yoga. Like, I, even, I texted you. I said, "Is this waist up?" Because I got my yoga pants yeah, and yeah. flip flops on and a horrible pedicure. So tell me, it's just waist up. So when you made the decision to walk away from that main anchor gig, I'm sure a lot of people were surprised, and it was big news. And you walked away. You had gotten married, and you become a stepmom to to three great kids. What was the decision process for you? Were it, you were you nervous about that? No, and you know what's weird? It was an easy decision, one that I probably should have done sooner. And at the end of the day, it came down to one thing. I wasn't having fun anymore. I love your story because I think this can be applied. Now, granted, you're a news anchor and, and have had this, you know, what a lot of people consider to be a fancy career. But I think no matter where people are working and what they're doing, it is important to find your joy, to identify what makes you happy. And travel makes you happy. And you've managed to figure out a way to go and do these junkets, travel the world, and and work kind of on your terms. What yeah. has that been like? It's been the greatest thing ever. And again, I wish I had done it sooner. And I encourage people. I see so many people stuck in a job. or And believe me, I understand that for many, it's just a paycheck. You can't really afford to leave it right now. But if you can, do is my advice. You know, my stepson, ironically enough, I've been working since I was in high school really and go figure three months after I leave channel three he has a massive brain hemorrhage and is at Barrow Neurological Institute for four months I mean 
I, the timing of his brain hemorrhage was even good because yeah. we were here in the country. We had just come back from Guatemala, with the whole family and the kids. Dr. Robert Spetzler, one of the best neurosurgeons in the yeah. world, did his surgery, saved his life. And so to me, I've always lived my life that way. Life is too short, but you're right. Travel is my number one passion. It's the thing, honestly, I'm best at. I've had friends, Kurt Warner and his wife had me redo their whole trip they were taking and, and plan it for them. I just, I love it. I can do it all day long. Friends think I'm crazy because I do travel a lot now that the kids are all grown and, and out and, of the house. And to be clear, not all the trips you're taking, you're not a f particularly fancy traveler. Oh my I mean, you gosh, go to nice places, but you, you like to go and actually see the world and learn. I will camp. I will go to B&Bs. I live on the web trying to find the best deal. You will never see me pay for a first class ticket ever. I've never spent that kind of money on a, on a plane ticket I'll use points I'll use miles I'll find deals all the time I mean that is what I love to do so you're right I am definitely the the frugal traveler and I've managed to pull it all off so. yeah well your pictures um for those who don't follow Tara what's your uh, Facebook page oh thanks for asking Carrie <laughs> let's get a quick it's plug <laughs> Tara, on, Tara on TV or just type in Tara Hitchcock and hopefully it'll pop up or on Twitter it's at Tara TV one so let's talk about Dylan and your other stepkids first of all um when you met your husband uh, you were single, yeah. television anchor, out and about, having fun, living the good Hooch, life. Hooching it up Hooching with my friend up. Carrie Pena <laughs> so. at all the Scottsdale nightclubs. Uh, we're going to edit that out. <laughs> um, so when you met Ken, and then w was it a daunting thing, or were you excited to become a stepmom to three kids? You know, it's funny, because when I was in Beaumont, I mentioned my Beaumont job. Um, I was dating another guy there at the time who had two kids. That was my first experience dating someone a little older with children. And for whatever reason, I just took to it naturally and now I feel like that prepared me for meeting this man who had three kids and it didn't even phase me you know my stepdaughter who's now 28 if she came to me and said hey I'm dating a guy 10 years older with three kids I'd go oh my gosh that's that sounds like a lot of work but yet I did it and it didn't feel like work at all and how did it enhance your life? My whole world became about them and what can we do with them? And I had a ton of vacation time. That was my thing. I, it wasn't always about the money. It was about how much vacation time could I get. And every single day of, of, of my vacation time was was allocated to family stuff. I you never brought just, them on your honeymoon, didn't you? Oh, they, came, they, they all got down on one knee and proposed with my husband. So they were cool. all in the honeymoon. They were all at the wedding. Absolutely brought them on the honeymoon. People thought I was nuts and... We did send him back after a week so, and, <laughs> and then go to Tahiti. But yeah, they came. It was their spring break, and that was that was part of the deal. They're our family. Let's talk about Dylan. Yeah. Uh, national Adoption Day was November 19th, and this is a collective national effort to raise awareness about the more than 100,000 children waiting for permanent families, loving families. And this day is very significant to you, Tara. Why? Well, it's interesting. When I met my husband, he had two kids biologically with his ex-wife and one they had adopted at birth, Dylan. And Dylan, I think when I met him was maybe six or seven, blonde hair. Um, his eyes are not the same color as mine, but one of the first questions he asked me when he met me was, "Am I? are you my real mom? And, and he always knew he was adopted, and it was always one of these things that was discussed. You know, it was a decision based in love. You know, your your birth mom, she was a young girl, 15 at the time, just did not have the means to take care of him and wanted the best for him, and it was a decision based in love. But when he asked me that, my answer initially was, oh, you know, I, I wish, but I'm not. But I'll bet your mom loved you so much that she wanted to find a family, and she was insistent on this, finding a family that had other siblings because she wanted this boy to grow up with, you know, a brother, a sister, just some, somebody else. That mm -hmm. was one of the things. Since then, you know, it's, it's funny. It would come up a lot as he grew older, but in strange ways. I remember one year, maybe a few years later, Dylan said, hey, my New Year's resolutions are play more Xbox and find my real mom. You know, it, it, random things. Or maybe he wouldn't bring her up. So you would know you knew it was weighing on his oh, mind. Oh, completely. And as he grew older, I saw it weigh on his relationships. And, you know, I would talk to my husband. i go, we've got to find, you know, this wouldn't be that difficult to find, quite frankly. It wouldn't take a lot of effort. They knew the woman's name. They had, they, he had kept in touch with her for a few years, sending her a photo every year. And um, then that kind of ended. But I was just convinced, why, why isn't anyone working at this? And his concern, like many others, you know, what if, you know, he gets a door slammed in his face? What if it's not a good outcome? What if it shatters him? And... and I have a weird perspective, and again, I hope I don't offend anybody by this, but my attitude about adoption is if you make that choice and that child grows up wanting a few answers, you owe that child a meeting. You know, I understand everyone's life takes a different shape and you don't owe them a friendship necessarily or now you're a parent again, but to me, you owe them a meeting. And I just couldn't believe that a young 
very spiritual, religious, 15-year-old girl grew up, you know, only to shut the door in our face should we ever approach her. I just, I just, I knew it would not be a bad outcome. Finally, he was, uh, it was only a couple years ago, 19 years old, and I'm a big spier. I'm a big believer in spying on the kids, especially the ones that get into trouble. You ha- I, I don't ever use it against them, but I file that you information know away. Going on. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and it's a lot of strategy involved. And I had, I'd read an entry or a letter he had written to a friend of his, a girl, and he just poured his heart and soul out again about his birth mother. And even with his health crisis, you know, when he was 16 years old at Barrow, one of the things he, he asked me, he goes, do you think my real mom knows I'm here? And I said, you know what, Dylan, I don't know if she does or not. I go, I, I, I would love her to know that you're here because I'll bet she'd come and see you. I didn't know what to say at the time. I want to ask you, uh, did the health crisis that you all went through, because it was very extreme, right? I mean, it- very extreme. He honestly shouldn't be here. He should have died, but he did not. I mean, it was a miracle. The doctors at Barrow are just so good at what they do. He had what's called an AVM out of nowhere, an arteriovenous malformation um, that just ruptured. And a certain percentage of the, popu- of the population has this thing. You never know when it's going to happen. And when it does, oh, you know. Usually it, it leads in death. Did that change you, Tara, and change or accelerate the decision that had been sort of lingering about potentially finding uh, his birth mom? Because when you are faced, and we cover these situations, Uh, too many to count tragedies that you and I have covered over the years but when you're faced with a tragedy and and your child facing a life or death boy that things come clear real quick well it did but it reinforced what I'd already wanted to do so sure enough um, a few years later I found her on Facebook and it was right before it was it's going to be an anniversary because it was New Year's Eve and I thought oh do I just overwhelm her on New Year's Eve with this information And it turned out to be the best thing I ever did. I emailed her. I didn't wait. She responded within a few hours. And it was just, it was uh, unbelievable what unfolded. He wanted to meet her instantly. We drove down to Oceanside, California. He's actually now living with her. Um, He's made some interesting decisions over the past few years. And he's now with her. And last Thanksgiving, uh, Thanksgiving's this weekend, and and we had her. Dylan has two half-sisters. We had all of them in Arizona so they could meet Dylan's siblings, see my husband, obviously, and my whole extended family. And it's, uh, it's been... I know everyone's outcome will not be that, but it's it's been the biggest blessing since my wedding day that I've ever experienced or witnessed. What do you want to say to people um, talking about National Adoption Day? Uh, to me, it is just so tragic how many kids are left in foster care, especially kids who are about to age out and they never have families. What, what do you want to say about being a mother of a child who you guys brought into your home, um, your husband and his ex-wife, and then you later on coming into the picture? What has it been like to be an adoptive mother? Um, well, t- stepmom and adoptive mother, to me, it goes back to one thing my husband said years ago. Kids can never have enough love. At, at the end of the day, that's that's all you need to know. So whether you have one mom, two moms, three moms, who cares? I mean, a kid can never have enough love. I've got a girlfriend, Amy Carney. She wouldn't mind me saying this because Amy and Keith Carney used to play for the Phoenix Coyotes. They've got four biological children. And this weekend on National Adoption Day, they went through and adopted an older boy, their new son, and I couldn't be more proud of them. And they've been foster parents before. It's a beautiful thing. But at the end of the day, I always remember what my husband said. Kids can never have enough love. I and love that. That's it. So, T, uh, for you today, it seems like on so many levels, uh, as we just talked about your career um, and with your family, it's kind of about really seizing life, right, Mm -hmm. and not waiting. It really is. And I know it sounds so trite. Life is too short. I mean, we did stories on Barrow, you know, when I was at Channel 3 all the time, but until you have a kid who's in a coma... And, and your entire world is now dependent on these doctors, you really don't get it. And I just see it happen too often. I mean, how many stories do we do about the healthy 60-year-old who, who drops dead hiking camelback? Or it, it just could happen at any moment. And, and it's trite, but it's so true, but it's just reinforced how I've always lived my life. You, 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 carpe diem is kind of sees the day, and that's what I firmly believe. All right, what was Tom Cruise like? Oh my gosh, and then we gotta the go. nicest. I know people say he's so strange. The nicest guy to everybody. I've yeah. never seen an act, besides The Rock, I've never seen an, a celebrity sign more autographs, be nicer to his He fans. gets a bad rap, huh? He does, but I don't, I, I, I know a lot of it has to do with the whole Scientology thing, but in terms of just watching him interact, I've never seen anyone better except The Rock. The Rock. Isn't he oh. like the sexiest man on people's 
magazine right now? He is, and he should just be that cover for, for <laughs> the next, to be like a Supreme Court appointment. It's just a lifetime thing. He is unbelievable. Smelling what the rock is cooking. <laughs> Tara Hitchcock, yep. T, thanks. And where can people find you once again? Okay, Facebook, Tara on TV. Actually, my website's TaraOnTV.com, yeah. but quite frankly, I have to update that. But that will link you to my Phoenix Magazine articles, the Harkins stuff. I do a ton for Harkins. Hopefully, if you go to a Harkins theater, you see my big fat face on uh, the TV monitor. I see your mug there. come on up there. there you go, hey, go. I know her. We love Dan Harkins <laughs> and the whole Harkins family of a gazillion theaters in five different states. So there and uh, TaraOnTV.com and you know, that'll link you to everything. All right, T, thank you so much. And thanks to all of you for being here. Uh, we always appreciate you and your feedback. You can find us online at InspiredMedia360.com. Today's show produced and engineered by Shannon The Rock Hernandez. <laughs> Oh, smell what Shannon's cooking. (laughs) Brought to you by Inspired Media 360. Until next time, stay inspired.